Over the last couple of weeks, I tried to beat Super Mario 3D Land without touching a single evil coin. And it pains me to say that, but after weeks of routing and hours over hours of grinding, there are still stinky coins I can't find a way to avoid. Nasty and evil coins that decided to settle down in such a way that we're simply forced to collect them. Nonetheless, there are still coins in the game that only appear to be unavoidable. Coins that want to trick us into picking them up, even though it is absolutely not necessary. So today, we're going to take a look at the most problematic coins in the game. We'll investigate which coins can be avoided, even though they appear to be undodgeable. And we will find out what the least amount of coins required to beat Super Mario 3D Land is. So are you ready? Let's do this! So the way I attempted to route this was by first playing through all stages once and to take notes which levels contain evil coins that we can't avoid by simply platforming around them. Luckily, most of the coins in the game can be easily avoided. As the name of the game implies, Super Mario 3D Land is, well, in 3D. This not only gives us cool 3D visuals, but actually a whole new dimension for additional coin dodgery. Nonetheless, there are three spots in the game where at least, at first glance, dodging coins is completely impossible. A whopping seven of them are located in 5-2, because the local coins there act like some sort of broken doorkeeper that tries to pay us if we want to enter a room. In 5-5, there are two enemies that live close to the flagpole, which can't be removed. And finally, there are four coins that settle down in a narrow corridor in 7-4. Those are all the coins in the game that don't have an obvious solution to avoid them. And those are the places that make beating the game coinless impossible. We will take a closer look at those spots in a moment, but first let's talk about coins in Super Mario 3D Land in general, because the game features a couple of problematic extra coin collecting mechanisms. First, the flagpoles at the end of each stage aren't our friends in this game, because whenever we touch a flagpole, we're punished with shameful coins. The only way to end a stage without any coin collecting accidents is by hitting the top of the flagpole, since the top of the flag rewards a delicious one-up instead of run destroying coins. This alone wouldn't be much of a problem if it wasn't for another problem. When we touch a flagpole, all enemies that are close to the flagpole transform into unnecessary coins that are immediately collected. This means that we have to find a way to get rid of all enemies close close to a flagpole, while still being able to hit the top of the flagpole. Sometimes that's surprisingly difficult, for several reasons. One of them is that Super Mario 3D Land features no normal enemies, because all enemies in the game are actually just evil coins in disguise. As soon as we defeat an enemy, we are immediately punished with coins. Worst of all, the enemies don't drop the coins, but immediately add them to the coin counter. So whenever we have to defeat one of Bowser's minions, we face a problem. Luckily, there is one mechanic in the game that allows us to circumvent this, the fire flower. For some strange reason, enemies that are defeated by a fireball don't add their coins immediately to the coin counter, but drop their inner coins just somewhere into the world. So we often want to wear the funky fire flower outfit so that we're able to get rid of enemies that block our path. But we also want to wear the tanuki suit in most stages, since we really need the extra platforming options it provides. Luckily, 3D Land allows us to store an additional power-up that we can conjure at will by tapping the lower screen. So power-up setup for the whole run is a tanuki suit and a fire flower, which we're able to pick up in the first two levels. The next threat to our run is our old friend, the timer. As soon as we finish a stage, the seconds left on the clock show their true evil nature and transform into troublesome coins. Luckily, this is surprisingly simple to solve. The seconds transform into coins at a ratio of 10 to 1. So 10 seconds left are one coin. All that we have to do in a full run of the game is to wait at the end of the stage for the timer to be below 10 seconds. And then we're finally able to end each level coinless. Hooray! Finally, there is one more trick that comes in handy when dodging all the shiny troublemakers, the Tanuki wall jump. Wall jumping while wearing a Tanuki suit is incredibly powerful in 3D Land. It allows us to skip tons of obstacles in the game and sometimes we're even able to sequence break complete stages because of the incredible height we're able to obtain by wall jumping into a Tanuki flutter. Okay, so that are the basics. Next, let's take a look at the doorkeeper coins in 5-2. 5-2 is structured like a Zelda dungeon. The camera is always top down and we have to platform through different dangerous rooms. The problem here is that most doors are besieged by a bunch of worthless coins. First, there are three coins in front of a small passageway. Then there is one coin that blocks the path to the checkpoint, followed by two floating coins that made themselves comfortable directly in front of the doorway. And finally, there are another two stinky coins on the ground 
in another doorway. The reason why those coins are so troublesome is because the passageways are so low that it isn't possible just to simply jump over the coins. Nonetheless, a couple of those coins can still be avoided. While it is not possible to just jump over the last two coins in this section, it is luckily still possible to avoid them. It took me a bit of tinkering, but a well-timed long jump gets the job done here. Next, the two floating coins. All that we have to do here is to make use of the awesome Tanuki suit flatter abilities. This allows us to get enough height to just flatter over them. The next coin is where stuff becomes difficult. This shiny yet deadly coin is placed in a small hole. The huge problem here is that the exit is so low that we can't just jump into the next room. But if we jump into the hole, then we aren't able to hop into the next room without picking up stupid shiny currency. Removing this coin took me forever, but luckily there is still a way to make it through the section without acquiring any unwanted wealth. The trick is Tanuki suit roll long jumping. While Mario wears the Tanuki suit, he isn't able to roll, but he does a tail attack instead when we hit the roll button. If we jump while we're tail swiping, then Mario hops while still crouching and does a fast tail swipe while moving forward. If we position ourselves perfectly at this spot and then tail swipe long jump, then Mario's hitbox is still the hitbox of crouched Mario, which makes us just small enough to make it over the coin and into the next room without bumping into the doorway. Hooray! Another coin down. Finally, the three coins at the beginning. Those sadly feature the first, actually unavoidable coin. The path here is so small that there is no way to walk past this section without eating disgusting coins. To make matters even worse, the doorway here is so low that there is no way to jump over the last coin. The coin's hitbox just completely fills the entry. The first two coins can be dodged if we take damage so that Big Mario transforms into a smaller self, because then Mario's hitbox is so small that long jumping over the first two coins becomes possible. But the last coin in this stage, sadly, needs to be collected. I tried to platform past this coin for about two hours, but as far as I can tell, it's simply impossible to enter the next room without picking up this dumb coin. Our only chance to ever dodge this coin would be some crazy out of bounds trick, but unfortunately, there is no known setup here that allows us to get out of bounds. So, this is the first one we currently can't avoid. Before we take a look at the other two super complicated spots, let's first take a rapid look at a couple of other nasty coins that can be avoided somewhat easily. In 4-2, there are tons of coins directly over a bounce pad. This makes it impossible for us to use the bounce pad to get up there. But luckily, a couple of well-timed Tanuki wall jumps allow us to skip those coins with ease. At the end of 5-1, we have to shoot Mario out of this cannon in order to hit the top of the flagpole. But sadly, there is a coin circle blocking the spot where we need to shoot to hit the flagpole's top. It is super difficult, but there is barely enough space for Mario to fly over the coin ring while still landing on the flagpole. The final stage features a similar problem. Here we have to shoot Mario once again out of a cannon to a higher platform. And once again, another coin circle blocks the correct shot. It's not possible to aim above or below the circle here. Because if we do this, Mario um, dies. So I'm bringing this up because it took me almost half an hour of shooting Mario into his doom before I realized that we can just shoot Mario to the left of the circle. Whoops! In 3-2 there are even more coin circles underwater that appear to be unavoidable at first, but as it turns out, there is just enough room for Mario to waddle past them. Finally, in 6-1, an infinite amount of cheap jumps jumps out of the water, close to the flagpole. We can't end the stage while a cheap jump is on screen, but there is no way to stop them from spawning. This took me a bit of tinkering, but it is solvable. All that we have to do here is to switch over to the fire flower outfit, then we have to drop a tanuki leaf in front of us, murder the fish as soon as it's Spawns, switch outfit again fast and hit the top of the flagpole without wasting any time. If everything works out, we're so fast that no cheap jump spawns before we officially end the level. Hooray! Okay, so next the super evil coins in 5-5. So the problem here is a bit complicated. Whenever there are enemies on screen, when we hit the flagpole, we're punished with coins. Sadly, in this stage, a couple of flying beetles decided to flutter close to the flagpole. This means that we're punished with two coins as soon as we finish the level. The next problem is that we're forced to touch the top of the flagpole, because otherwise we're punished with coins as well. Okay, so we can't jump onto the enemies to defeat them, since that would grant us coins, which makes us grumpy. But we also can't finish the level while all the enemies are alive. The only 
only way to get rid of those enemies is by throwing fireballs towards them. And this is where this becomes so complicated. The thing is the following. The level is built around whirling around while wearing a propeller helmet block thingy. But the propeller block thingy is actually no power up, but a power down. Because while Mario hides his marvelous mustache inside this box, he's unable to throw fireballs. So if we really want to finish this stage with as little coins as possible, then we need to find a way to hit those beetle-like creatures with fireballs. Which means we have to reach them without the block helmet thing. So how do we do this? Well, as it turns out, the block head thingy can be cut if we reach this spot, take damage on purpose to get rid of our head replacement and then raise this platform. Then we're able to flutter from here to this platform. Yep, it's actually surprisingly simple to do this. On this platform, we're able to quickly change outfit and to dress up for beetle destruction. And then, then we have to play Mario, as if it was Duck Hunt. If we place ourselves in the corner of the platform, then we're able to snipe most of the beetles by throwing fireballs towards them. This way, we're able to remove all enemies but the final one. I tried to shoot this final flying creature for more time than I'm willing to admit, but it sadly isn't possible to hit it from up here. The fireballs just despawn before they reach the enemy. Theoretically, it is possible to long jump from here while throwing a perfectly placed fireball, which would solve the beetle problem, but then we're stuck on this platform without a way to hit the top of the flagpole, which means we trade one stinky coin for another one. Sadly, here we are forced to pick up one coin of shame. Before we investigate the final super problematic coin location, we just quickly need to talk about something else. We need to talk about all the troll coins in the game. So first, ladies and gentlemen, forget slopes, we have a new arch enemy. Grass. Grass and flowers are a nightmare in 3D land. Because sometimes, not always, but often enough, there are sneaky coins that hide below the high grass in the game and just wait for the right moment to ambush us. I stopped counting how often I had to redo a stage because an evil wild coin appeared out of nowhere when I was walking through high grass in a game. Seriously, that's not Pokemon Nintendo. But sneaky grass coins are far from the only coins that try to troll us. For some super strange reason, Nintendo decided to put tons of queso coin blocks all over the game. My favorite one is in five 5-4, just after the checkpoint. This hidden block trolled me at least half a dozen times before I finally started to remember not to jump here. 5-4 is super evil in general. The first time I cleared the level, I rewatched the footage only to find out that I collected an invisible ghost coin somewhere by accident. Seriously, watch this. Why do we collect a coin here? I just wait here, start running, no coin in sight and then, yep, we totally collected a coin here. My best guess is that this fireball hit some grass out of sight. Grass and fire is generally a super dangerous combination. Remember that enemies drop their coins when we defeat them with fire? Well, if we accidentally shoot grass with a fireball, then we're immediately punished with a coin. The coin doesn't even drop, it just straight up adds to the coin counter. The worst place where this can screw us is at the end of 2-2. Here three stupid winged Goombas fly near the flagpole, which means we have to shoot them before we end the level. If we miss a single shot here, then we have a problem, because this shot then lands on top of some grass and we're immediately punished with a coin. 2-2 is one of the mechanically more challenging stages in the Run, since we have very little room to dodge coins here. And because of this dumb grass, I had to redo the stage three times. Seriously, stupid grass. Anyway, one final spot is left for us to investigate. The hallway coins in 7-4. Holy fuzzy, those dumb coins. So. 7-4 is the clock level. We have to make our way here through the inner of a gigantic timepiece while crazy moles attack us. Basic stuff. The problem here is this small corridor. Here five coins settle down at one of the worst places possible. The entrance to this area is so low that we can't just jump over the first coin. And to leave this area we are required to pick up at least four coins. So, as it turns out, it is possible to dodge all coins here. But the way we do this is a bit ridiculous. First we want to take damage so that we're small Mario. Small Mario is just small enough to jump through the entrance and over the first ugly coin. And then, then we wall jump and wall jump and wall jump. There is just enough space above the coins to wall jump here like a madman. Basically if we want to dodge these coins we have to wall jump like never before. We have to wall jump for our lives. Each wall jump just brings us a tiny bit closer to the exit. This takes a while. But once we're close to the exit we have to do the hardest wall jump of them all. It's not possible to wall jump off the corner here. Which means that we have to slide down until we almost hit a coin. Wall jump, slide down again and then do our final wall jump and hooray! We just skipped all coins here. Those coins can actually be avoided. This means that there are only two coins required to beat Super Mario 3D Land. So the next time someone asks you why it is not possible to beat Super Mario 3D Land without collecting a single coin, 
Now you know the answer. It's because of this coin in 5-2 and because of this beetle thingy in world 5-5. If someone of you wonderful ladies and gentlemen has any ideas on how to get rid of those nasty coins, please let me know about it. Maybe there is something that I missed that allows us to actually beat the game coinless. For anyone who wants to see more coins not getting collected, Nico Barbecue just routed Super Mario World and Mayro recently made a really cool video about his journey to route 3D World with as little coins as possible. The link to both videos is in the description and I highly recommend checking them out. Though, be careful with Nico. I don't want to sound paranoid or anything, but his name is an anagram for coin. The link to the raw footage of me routing all the levels is in the description. With that being said, I hope that all of you enjoyed this little video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe feel especially like jumping in between walls today and want to the subscribe button as well. I hope that all of you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!